Hi everyone, my name is Valerie and welcome to today's In the Kitchen with Power Center. Today we're going to be making Dan Dan Noodle, a popular Sichuanese street food dish that you can find on the street vendors of Sichuan or popular restaurants across the United States. And today I'm going to teach you how to make dandan noodle at home using ingredients that you can easily find at supermarkets and um, online. So for dandan noodles, there are some ingredients that probably need a little extra effort to source. First, we're going to start with this um, ya cai, or the translation of it would be fermented mustard. It's basically a fermented and dried mustard green that um, are commonly used in Sichuanese cooking. So um, finding ya cai is not that difficult if you can um, access um, online sites like on Amazon. So you just type ya cai and then um, the thing will pop up and the inside of the packaging kind of looks like this so you probably want to use them once you open them um, pretty quickly and next up we're going to talk about this um, chili red chili oil that's used in the sauce it's a um, also chili oil from Chengdu, from Sichuan. Um, it's kind of hard to source in the United States. I checked online, there are very few places that sell them. So to substitute that, you can just find buy the chili oil by Lee Kun Ki. Um, that's the most popular Asian condiment brand, I think. So you can probably find this chili oil at any Asian grocery store in the United States. And next, let's talk about noodles. Um, I happen to have Sichuan Dandan noodle at home. Um, they are they come in those pre-portioned packages, so it's really easy if you're making it for one person, just use one, and if you're making it for two people, just you know double up your amount of noodles. And um, these type of noodles are widely accessible. They're sometimes called so men um, in supermarkets, and sometimes they're um, called other names like Sichuan noodles. It's the one that I have right now. You can also use freshly cut noodles that you find in like um, the refrigerator section of the supermarket. Um, but I would like to say that please stay away from egg noodles or rice noodles and other types of noodles. And also you probably want thin noodles as opposed to thick noodles um, for this particular dish. Aside from the ingredients I just mentioned that may need a little bit more effort to source, the rest of it is kind of simple. The noodle is basically consisted of three parts. The toppings, which in Chinese is called xiaozi, is um, the pork with mustard. And um, then we move on. The next part is obviously the noodles. And the third part is the sauce, which um, aside from what I just mentioned, the chili oil, where you're gonna need to use um, dark vinegar, which, you know, it's kind of offers a bit of acidity to the dish and um, soy sauce, light soy sauce. And you can also use some of the dark soy sauce to make the color more vibrant. Um, the next one is the sesame paste. There are a lot of sesame oil, but you really want to get the sesame paste for your dish because um, it makes the dish more rich and dense. If you can't find sesame paste, you can also use tahini for um, this part of the dish. And for some additional color and also flavor of the dish, you can also add some scallions and I also like to add crushed peanut to the dish. So now we're going to start with making the toppings and in this step, you're going to need ground pork, ya cai, which is um, fermented mustard, and star anise. And then we're going to go over the stove top and fry them. We're gonna start with some oil. You can be a little generous with oil here because we're um, going to fry up some pork. It's going to make it more fragrant. And now let's turn on the heat and at the start anise. Gonna take a little while. Now at the pork, it's gonna blister. You can lower the heat if you want. 
And now try to break the meat apart to make sure that they're evenly cooked. So in the step, um, we want to really be patient because um, according to the Sichuanese chefs, that the pork topping is supposed to be a bit crispy and overcooked on the edges, on the outside. So we really need to let it cook and simmer in the pork fat that it rendered and also the oil that we had um, simmer with, um, infused with the sardines. Once you can see the liquid coming out, it means that we're kind of there to add the yatai. As I said, mustard green is kind of the one of the columns of Sichuan cooking. You can find them in almost um, every dish um, of Sichuanese food and stir and make sure it's well mixed and now it's time to add a just a dash of dark soy sauce dark soy sauce is typically used to add nice color to food as opposed to seasoning like light soy sauce that's more commonly used and also it's optional to add some salt to it. I don't think it's needed simply because uh, the mustard green has been salted and fermented. So it's pretty salty already. It's got enough salt to season the pork. Now I can see that um, the pork is evenly cooked and uh, mustard green has been mixed well and it's uh, got a nice color. It's time to finish cooking here. And this is the noodle we're using today. Once it comes to a boil, you can add your noodles. And let them cook until tender. So my mom taught me a trick. Um, in the middle of cooking the noodles, you can add some, as it kind of seemed to coming back to a boil again, you can add some cold water and this will make the noodles extra chewy and now the noodle has come back to a boil again it's time to stop the heat so it's not overcooked and pick up the noodles Set them aside. And the next step, we're going to make the sauce. First, we're going to need soy sauce. One tablespoon, maybe one and a half. You can also feel free to adjust the amount of ingredients based on your personal preference. And next is, um, this chili oil from Chengdu. This is my favorite brand. It's kind of hard to find. So if you don't have this one, using the chili oil from Lee Kum Ki is totally fun as well. And next we're going to add some dark vinegar so any type of dark vinegar will do um, if you don't have dark vinegar you can also use um, other types of vinegar that you can find at home this is the sesame paste you can find sesame paste pretty easily at asian grocery store in a condiment section And last but not least, we're going to add chicken stock.
Use a spoon to give the sauce a gentle mix. The sesame paste might take a little patience for you to mix. And next step, you can use add half of the scallions that you prepared in there. First, we're going to add the noodles here. I'm going to add some of these toppings. Really depends on your personal preference. You can be generous or you can add just a little. And then we're gonna add the crushed peanuts. Just a little bit. And scallion. And there you go, you have uh, your noodles. Now this is a complete assembled dandan noodle dish. To eat it, you can use a pair of chopsticks to mix everything up and um, enjoy. The name dandan comes from the type of um, poles that merchants used to carry around cities because automobile wasn't invented. So they usually hand their merchandise on two ends of a bian dan that allows them to go around with um, the stuff they're selling around the city. And for dandan noodle sellers, they usually put the stoves on the front so they can cook the noodles on the spot and um, the plates and ingredients on the back. So because people see those guys selling those noodles around, they've started giving them the nickname dandan noodle because he sounded like the bian dan that they carry around the city. And uh, now those bian dan sellers are no longer seen in um, most places because they have cars and other types of transportation to go around the city. But people still kind of mesmerize over um, the old days when guys were just, you know, hustling on, on the street and selling noodles. If you like this dish, please let us know. Give us a thumbs up. And if you cook this dish, please remember to tag us um, at Powered Center on Instagram and YouTube. My name is Valerie. I'll see you next time.